Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about cellular respiration. Are you ready? I think we have talked about this in unit two, uh, but with more details for HL students uh, in here. Uh, essential idea, energy is converted to a usable form in cellular respiration. Of course, what does that mean a usable form? Because uh, the energy already being stored as a form of glucose, uh, that we are eating glucose in, from our foods, and then uh, we are going to uh, break down the glucose molecules into a usable form of energy. How do we do that? Well, we don't do anything just because our cells have mitochondria, and uh, there are two processes which include uh, before in entering to the mitochondria, uh, which is inside the cytoplasm, and that is called glycolysis. And after uh, glycolysis, then the produced or the products from the glycolysis move into the mitochondria, and then the rest of the, uh, the second stage of the respiration, which needs oxygen, and it is called an aerobic respiration is happening inside the mitochondria. So first of all, which is the first step, you are going to talk about glycolysis. And then we will, in the second stage, we will talk about the respiration inside the mitochondria, which is aerobic respiration. Uh, well, you can think about the nature of science over here. Uh, and pause the video and think, what does it mean? Paradigm shift. The chemiosmotic theory led to a paradigm shift in the field of bioenergetics. Let's move. Uh, here are those understanding skills and applications that you will, uh, you will learn by the end of this unit. Uh, it's a little uh, boring if I want to uh, read everything over here, so you can pause the video and read by yourself, because I'm going to talk about them while I am teaching. Uh, it's easier. So if you are interested, pause the video and read by yourself. Okay, uh, the first step uh, is how do we know, uh, or much, uh, how much do we know about uh, oxidation and reduction? Uh, maybe for those of you who have already taken chemistry in your course, uh, you have heard about this word, uh, which is called oilric. What is oilric? Oilric is, uh, stands for O for oxidation is loss of electrons. So oxidation is loss of electrons. Uh, well, when I was at high school, I didn't learn this with this, I mean, not in this way, because uh, it was easier for me to, to remember, oh, when you oxidize, means you lose something or you lose electron. When you are getting reduced, or re uh, which is called reduction, means you gain the electron. Anyway, it's up to you, where, whatever you want to learn based on this word as old Greek, oxidation is loss of electron and reduction is gain of electron. Example for this can be uh, mentioned in the, uh, in the chemical reactions, uh, which is uh, used by Benedict Benedicts. Uh, the Benedict is a famous uh, test and it's for monosaccharides and uh, reducing disaccharides. Uh, if you uh, have done the Benedict test, uh, you have seen that uh, adding Benedict in the water, the, the color will, will be blue because there is no glucose. And if you add the Benedict to a glucose, then that would be a, a change of color because of the presence of the Cu uh, ions, and they have two uh, uh, they're positive as they charge, and they turn into blue because they are receiving electrons, and the C 
uh, C uh, Cu two plus is becoming uh, uh, reduced, or they receive the electrons. So in that case, uh, Cu will be precipitated, uh, precipitated uh, at the bottom, which you can see over here. So uh, uh, that's the uh, Benedict test. And when does that when does happen? Uh, Any time with the presence of the glucose molecules. Uh, this means that if there is a sucrose or sucrose, uh, the Benedict doesn't doesn't have any effect because sucrose is a disaccharide, and it doesn't affect any disaccharide. But if you add some enzyme to to break down the sucrose into monosaccharide, then the Benedict uh, solution will turn into orange or red because the breakdown of the sucrose will happen and the, uh, the product would be monosaccharide or glucose, which turn Cu2 plus to Cu, which will precipitate and it changes the color uh, together with precipitation. So uh, we have uh, electron carriers. Uh, this electron carrier is called NAD. Uh, and what are the electron carriers? Uh, electron carriers are substances that can accept and give up electrons as needed. So they carry the electron, then the name is very obvious. And in the cellular respiration, uh, our electron carrier is NAD. Uh, what does that NAD do? Uh, the NAD can receive the two electrons and become as a form of NAD as a reduced. Uh, in more detail, remember that hydrogen atoms consist of a proton and an electron. So, uh, if NAD receives the electron, becomes reduced NAD, and uh, the form of the NAD uh, with the received electron could be like this NAD plus H as proton because uh, 2H will give the electron to NAD plus. So it turned the NAD plus to NADH and H, H positive, uh, which totally uh, means that the electron was received by the NAD from the protons. Uh, what is phosphorylation? Phosphorylation is gaining a phosphate molecule, and the phosphate molecule has a form of PO43 negative. So phosphorylation uh, makes molecules more unstable, uh, and unstable molecules react more easily. Why unstable? Because uh, phosphate uh, uh, needs to be added to glucose to make glucose more unstable, and the reaction goes faster, and that's why the ATP molecule is giving its phosphate uh, by converting to ADP uh, and at this stage the phosphate will go to glucose and makes glucose to glucose phosphate and we call it glucose 6-phosphate and we write it like glucose 6-phosphate this way. And this is the most important stage for uh, glycolysis to remember and I'm going to explain this picture because it's really easy to remember. What happens in glycolysis? First of all, glycolysis is inside the cytoplasm and it's an anaerobic, which means it doesn't need oxygen. And a glucose molecule will break down by the usage of the two ATP molecule and it turns or it converts to two three carbon molecules and these two three carbon molecules are, are, are called G3P uh, which is which stands for, for glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. We can remember by G3P. So uh, G3P, uh, two molecules of G3P which e either of them has only three carbons and then these two G3P uh, will uh, will change the NAD as a carrier uh, because they, these are carrier molecules 
and NAD becomes NADH, uh, and two ADP, one is here and the other one is here, uh, is turning uh, at each step uh, two ADP from here and two ADP from here, uh, they become two ATP and two ATP. So in total, uh, two ATP will produce here and two ATP will produce here, but two ATP is used, okay? So two used and four produced, and that's why the net would be two ATP and two NADH. This is something that you need to remember what is the product and what is the, uh, the end energy pro, uh, produced in the process of the glycolysis, which is two ATP and two NADH. That's what you should remember. Uh, this is a step-by-step -step, uh, diagram uh, starting from a hexose sugar in a glycolysis, which is happening in the cytoplasm. And the next step with, 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 uh, is the phosphorylation, adding the phosphate molecules uh, to the glucose, that was glucose 6-phosphate. And then uh, at this stage, uh, we need energy uh, uh, which, because uh, ATP will be used in order to phosphorylation. And then the next step uh, is lysis or splitting these phosphate molecules. Do you remember I said that the phosphorylation makes molecule unstable? So uh, then the, this glucose 6-phosphate will uh, convert to two group two molecule with, uh, in which uh, uh, either of them has only three carbons, uh, which is called G3P. And then uh, in the next stage, uh, these two G3P uh, turn into uh, two pyruvates. Uh, and you can see that uh, the, each of the pyruvate also has only three carbons. And uh, during this stage, uh, from, ch from uh, converting this G2 G3P to pyruvate, we will, we will get NAD as an electron carrier and becoming NADH. So what is this NADH? As I said, that's the electron carrier. And the process is oxidation because it's, uh, it receives the electron uh, from the G3P. And because G3P is, is giving the electron, it becomes oxidized and NADH is receiving electrons, so it becomes reduced. And yeah, NAD is become reduced. Uh, at this stage, uh, we'll be in an electron transport chain. We will talk about the electron transport chain later, uh, which is the process of the aerobic respiration. Uh, and it explains what happens to the NAD in the future. So I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, I'll talk about the aerobic here at this slide. And also there is another electron carrier, which is called FADH. We will talk about this later too. Uh, there will be two videos over here. Uh, both of them, uh, I will, I will uh, play this video and watch together. Uh, but this uh, would be on, up to you if you want to watch it because it's a long eight, nine minutes, nine minutes video. Okay, this is, this is the end of glycolysis and thanks for watching. Cells derive energy from the oxidation of nutrients such as glucose. The oxidation of glucose to pyruvate occurs through a series of steps called glycolysis. The energy released during these oxidation reactions is used to form adenosine triphosphate, ATP, the energy currency of the cell. The initial steps in glycolysis are the additions of two phosphates to the glucose molecule at the expense of two molecules of ATP. The result is a six carbon sugar diphosphate molecule and two low energy adenosine diphosphate molecules or ADP. 
This six carbon sugar diphosphate molecule is then split into two three carbon molecules. Each of the three carbon molecules is converted through a series of steps to pyruvate. During these reactions, electrons are transferred to the coenzyme NAD plus to form NADH and ATP is formed. Under aerobic conditions, the pyruvate is further oxidized to yield more ATP and under anaerobic conditions, the pyruvate is converted into lactic acid.